Hello, and welcome to part four of the Three Arts Disability Culture Leadership Initiative of Chicago Model. This series highlights the voices and work of Chicago artists who have participated in the Three Arts Residency Fellowships at UIC. I was able to chat with Reva Lear, Miriam Pari, and Rebecca Torres. Reva is an artist, curator, lecturer, and writer whose work focuses on issues of physical identity and a socially challenged body, especially in explorations of cultural depictions of disability. Miriam uses a combination of digital art, painting, video, and photography to generate a unique story using her own life to reflect the overall challenges and ambitions of the disability community. Rebecca is the founder of the nonprofit Backbone, an organization that connects people living with spinal injuries. She uses painting, illustration, photography, film, movement, and other media as a form of expression and a tool for advocacy and social justice. We discuss the relationship between artist and subject in portraiture and what it takes to build and sustain a culture. The center of my practice is about two things, giving people um, a fair amount of control over how they're depicted because uh, particularly people with disabilities but other constituencies have been so highly manipulated in how we've been seen over time in dominant culture that there's a lot of wounding um, that comes with being looked at. So uh, my, one of my goals has been to change that so that being looked at is also about taking uh, control of your own presentation. My background um, initially was in costume design and theater. And then as I um, started doing some disability advocacy work. Um, I started working with other mediums. I feel like I've mashed together my advocacy work and my artwork to sort of connect with the community of artists with disabilities here in Chicago. Being able to give my art a purpose um, for, for change and for social justice. My paintings largely come from life. I paint the faces of people who inspire me, people who interest me. I paint landscapes from my imagination. More recently, I've learned to collaborate with other artists to express our stories of and experiences through art. And, um, and sharing that has been, been really um, satisfying. I tried to look at your, um, more the Tres Fritas project. Miriam and I just finished up a project, um, an exhibition called uh, Tres Fridas Project, where we recreated um, images of um, iconic works of art and history and uh, replaced the subjects for people with, with people with disabilities. Either ourselves or other disabled mo models that we thought would help tell the story of the issue. So uh, with the Degas, the dance lesson, we talked about disability aesthetics and dance and how our bodies move differently than the able body. So we injected the disability culture into a image that's already familiar to people to kind of band that to start that dialogue. So to introduce disability culture to mainstream people in a way that was maybe more palatable than just saying, hey, disabled people are different and that should be okay with you. We wanted to say, think of it this way. Think of it in a way that maybe you're already familiar with and you could relate it to. And this is how we feel about um, interabled relationships. And this is how we feel about making music when you're blind or deaf or um, things like that. So, and so together we all um, came up with, you know, what we wanted, what we wanted the message to be for each image. So it's not just an image. There's like Miriam said, there's a lot of accompanying um, information and on different issues that our community 
faces and and also just celebrating some of the things um, within our community and so um you know a lot of people mentioned at the exhibition that um it was really eye-opening to read the text cards that were with each image which was really nice to hear you know initially we didn't really have plans for it to to get as 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 big as we you know we were going to recreate one image and in the end we ended up recreating 16 images and it was um super fulfilling to not only find ways of creating this work ourselves but also meeting some of the people that were models for um like as subjects for the images um and you know i think that created an opportunity for us to sort of connect with the community of artists with disabilities here in chicago seems like a really powerful and beautiful project traditionally the relationship between an artist and uh, a subject has been one of either one side has the power or the other does and i've been wanting to tear that down so that um i make myself vulnerable to my subject because i know well i generally call them my collaborator uh because that's what i'm striving for um but to make sure that in the process that we're exploring that they feel they don't feel like something you know a bug being pinned to a fall through my career it's it has been hard to be taken seriously and not just as a story of uh, tragedy, uh, tri triumph over tragedy. I found that every time I wanted to tell the story about me as an artist and what I was doing, a lot of times it would get flipped to be a story, an inspirational story, uh, you know, the inspiration porn kind of story. And there was just no way that I could break out of it, no matter how, what I said, or how I wanted to portray myself, it's that other people would keep making the decision to frame it in this, in this way that has just been so overdone in, in history so many times of the over sentimentalized disabled person. I've learned some of the tools to kind of break away from those difficulties as being seen as equal to other working artists and not just an inspirational story. In I think 1994, it never occurred to me that there could be, um, I mean, as far as I knew, disability arts was part of therapy and was very um, demeaned and well-meaning and either not considered to be part of contemporary art discourse or not part of contemporary art discourse. I was told that I absolutely should not be working on anything disability related because I would immediately uh, doom any kind of a career that I might possibly have. And that was the message that I was continually surrounded by growing up, that we were, we should be ashamed and we should be hidden. When you can't get there, you not only invent it, you, um, you make your own work because we were all being rejected. Um, from our respective fields. So, so yeah, you know, now there's been at least two more generations since then. And each one is kind of refining and changing the direction. While we're at it, I just want to say it to you, Reva. How do you define yourself? How do you categorize yourself? Or do you categorize yourself? Are you an artist with a disability? Are you a disabled artist? In context, I mean, if I'm writing a, a grant, then I'll say I'm an artist and I work on disability culture. Um, if I'm at a party and somebody asks me what I do, I say I'm an artist and a writer. Um, I feel like standing there as a big old cripple is pretty obvious. It's a really interesting question, Miriam, because I, you know, I was thinking about you, your work is mouth painting you know like and it is unique and it is a part and so like i would want to mention it too and but yeah i um i usually just say i'm an artist i guess i feel the same way as like you can usually tell that i'm in a wheelchair so 
<laughs> people will know, but um, if it if it requires for me to put that in a bio or something, but I usually it kind of comes out in the other work that I'm doing anyway, because a lot of a lot of the work that I do is advocacy and it just comes out anyway. I mean, the most important time to say it is if somebody's looking at my portraiture. Um, I do say that I'm disabled right in there because there are other artists who've done portraiture of people with disabilities. Most of them have been outside of disability. Most of them have been in a more voyeuristic position. So I feel like it's important to explain that I'm inside the experience. Justin, what about you? How, how has the last month, couple months been for you as a black man who's disabled, who's right, bridging at least two, two very profound experiences? Yeah, uh, I'll be honest with you. It's been it's it's been it's been pretty pretty tough. You know, I was I was pretty depressed. Rebecca knows this. I'm a person that's always out. I'm always traveling somewhere. I'm always doing something. A lot of the work that I've been doing um, was really focused on mental health. You know, especially within you know Black and Latino communities. And we were actually supposed to put out, there was a bill that we were working on that was supposed to be put down state. And then when COVID happened, that just shut it all, that pretty much shut everything down. And so all of that work that we were doing, it just was like, it was, everything just was crashing down and I didn't know how to handle that. And then you add the stuff with all the sort of police brutality and then the George Floyd like news hit. Then that just, you know, opened up a whole, floodgate of other you know issues you know as as a as a black man as a black disabled man and it just everything was just it was just crashing and just falling down on me and i just couldn't deal with everything and to be honest with you just like doing these interviews and interviewing all all of you you know that you know over the past couple of days it's just been it's really, you know, up to my spirits a bit, you know, it's really motivated me to continue to do the work that I do. And just getting back into it all, it's just something that I am glad that I have. And for me, it's been, it's been something that, I'm sorry, it's just been something that I'm glad that I have. We're here with you. Thank been, you. I'm glad I have all you guys too. It's been rough. Yeah, it's really <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just been months of stuff. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right, right, right now. But I'm glad that I'm getting back into stuff and continuing to do the work that I that, that I love to do. So I'm I'm glad that you I'm glad that you asked that question, Rifa. I'm so glad. You know, when I think of the Chicago uh, disability arts community, I see like a community of people coming together. To and being a part of that has really made me understand that we all have this really great opportunity to take a really critical role in like the heritage of disability arts for the future. I think that our number one task in a way is to let the world know that there's a culture. Once the institutions know that there's a coherent culture and that you're working within it and you're commenting on it and you're furthering it, that changes it from just a couple of artists who seem to be doing this project to um, a really profound social uh, context. And I think that that's what's really changed things for us. I've met artists that are doing, you know, visual art from, you know, dancers, um, voiceover artists, actors. Um, it's just, I just think it's, it's great to see. And um, it really brings me to feel like I can do whatever the hell I want with my art because this is what I have to say and this is how I want to do it and feel supported that there's other people doing it their way as well. So 
I don't know, makes me really excited to have a community. <laughs> My experience with the fellowship and the residency, I felt like I was an island before, um, <laughs> and an island of an artist kind of um, new to a lot of these, these concepts of being around the bodies of work people and the people at the fellowship and UIC, I, it, even though I inherently knew disabled, disability aesthetics because I, I happen to be a mouth painter and everything I do informs, you know, my disability informs my art so much, but it wasn't until I came into this community through the fellowship that, that words and definitions were, were put to it and made me understand uh, a new way of understanding what I was kind of already doing and what others were already doing and that I wasn't alone and that there's so many other artists um, striving for, for, to be heard and to have a voice just like myself. That's really exciting. It's like the shared act of a, our community is like saying, you know, we, we make the world and we just don't want to inherit it. We want to include our voices, include our stories, our, our, our aesthetics, our artistic sensibilities. And that's, that's really, really um, powerful. And I, I know it's going on in other places, but the fact that I'm here in Chicago and experiencing it with the, this really large community and with the programs that we have here and three arts, I, I believe that there is a powerful community here. I want us to have what we need but I want us always to be able to be um, a little bit startling, a little bit on the margins so that we can stay aware of um, the power that we do have in being uh, different and always having to remind people that, that humanity comes in such a range of morphologies and behaviors and, you know, the envelope of humanity is made out of elastic and people want to make it out of concrete. And I want us to be able to keep it elastic. I'm so glad that we did this session last because it just feels like everything kind of just came full circle. Everything that sort of just came together. So you had the, the history aspect, you had try to be, you know, recognized for the work that you do, and then, you know, going into disability aesthetics. And it just all came into this one last session. I'm really glad that I was like a part of, of that. And I'm also thankful to um, Reva, you know, for, you know, asking me the question about how I was feeling. And, you know, for me, that was something that I think was really, you know, deep and really poignant for me. And so I am grateful for her and I am grateful for all the artists, you know, that we interviewed. I'm just really proud of the work that they do. And, you know, I'm very proud of like what Three Arts, Bodies of Work and UFC, you know, have done in coming together and, you know, putting this, you know, initiative together because it's important, you know, as disabled artists, especially here in Chicago, to really keep it going, making sure that this community is sustained and that it keeps going for generations to come. And so I am very thankful for everyone that was involved in these sessions.